This is ChestertonRadio.com. J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Boo Hoo. <laughs> Shopping, movies, bridge. Many women are likely to spend their afternoons these days in one of those three ways. But shopping, movies, or bridge sometimes means that you get home a little late and have to hurry with dinner. But never mind that, even if you have less time than usual, you can always serve a dessert you'll be proud of. Jell-O. Jell-O takes so little time to prepare, and it tastes downright delicious. Your whole family will enjoy Jell-O's true fruit flavor, flavor that comes from fresh, ripe fruit. Try strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime, but be sure you get the real thing. Be sure you get genuine Jell-O. Accept no substitutes, because only genuine Jell-O has that extra-rich fresh fruit flavor. Remember to look for the big red letters on the box. They spell (laughs) Jell-O. Ladies and gentlemen, after a week in the desert, we bring you that sun-baked comedian with the warmed-over jokes, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Thank you. (laughs) Hello again. This is Jack Benny, that little ray of sunshine, just back from a week at Palm Springs and feeling twice as healthy as ever before. And anything but anemic. Well, that's fine, Jack. That's fine. Uh, did you get on there to get rid of your cold? Yes, Don. My cold and Fred Allen. <laughs> the cold doesn't bother me anymore. Well, tell me, Jack, uh, have you had any more dreams about Allen since last Sunday? Yes, I have, and it certainly makes a lie out of that old saying that you meet a better class of people in your dreams. <laughs> Anyway, tonight I'm going to put that town hall ghost in his place once and for all. What are you going to do, Jack? Well, you know, Don, this is my big triumph. Tonight I'm going to play the B on my violin and redeem myself in the eyes of my listeners. And believe me, I'm going to town. Well, good luck to you, Jack. Yes, sir. Hi, Don. Oh, how are you, Mary? Hello, Heifetz. <laughs> Hello. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Even though I do appreciate the compliment, I think it's hardly fair to compare me with Heifetz. I don't think Heifetz would approve of that. Don't worry, he'll get the gag. (laughs) Well, I hope so. Say, Jack, did you hear that 10-year-old boy play the bee last Wednesday night? Yes, Mary, I did. Wasn't he swell? Well, yes, for a kid 10 years old. Of course, I thought his crescendos were rather abrupt, and it seemed to me that his allegrettos lacked pace. You know what I mean, Mary? Yes, you're jealous. Yeah. Well, I'm not jealous. I can play the bee with one hand and love and bloom with the other. Gee, yeah. if you can hold a stick between your toes, you can direct yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Some nifty retort reminds me of another joke. Huh? That's it. Uh, doesn't it? Kenny, it's your cue. It's oh, a... say, Jack. Yeah. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello. Hello. Have you got a minute? Sure. What's on your mind? Well, I'm kind of worried about something. Look, Jack, garage rent is pretty expensive here in Hollywood, isn't it? Uh, garages? Yeah, they run about 15 or $20 a month. Boy, that's a lot. Then there's yeah. automobile insurance, isn't there? Yes, that runs you about $100 a year. Why? Gosh, and on top of that, gas and oil and tires? Gee, that's bad. Well, Kenny, why all this worry about garages, insurance and everything? I just bought a raffle ticket on an automobile. <laughs> Well, don't worry, Kenny. You haven't got a chance in a million of winning. Oh, boy, that's a load off my mind. (laughs) Say, Jack, are you going to play the bee tonight? Hmm. Is he? 
He's going to play the bee with one hand, love and bloom with the other, and sneeze pennies from heaven. <laughs> Thanks, Mary, but that's exaggerating. Say, Jackie, you a little nervous tonight? You know, shaky or anything? Well, naturally, Phil. It's a big night for me. And say, Phil, did you augment your orchestra like I asked you to, you know, make it symphonic? Yes, I did, Jack. I added a couple of hoboes, a zither, and uh, a musical saw. Well, that's a, a different sort of a thing anyway. Uh, couldn't you get an organ grinder? Well, I, tr I tried, but his monkey was on a sit-down strike. <laughs> Say, Phil, you know, your orchestra does look pretty snappy tonight, all dressed up for the occasion. Did they get new tuxedos? Oh, no, they just had their lapels shined. Oh, their lapels shined. Well, well, that, that is quite a glare there. Where do they stand up and turn around? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> By the way, Jack, uh, who's going to pay these extra musicians? You know, the ones I hired tonight. I don't know, Phil. Take it up with the sponsor. I did, and he washed his hands with the whole thing. Hmm, sanitary fellow, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry about it, Phil. We'll straighten it out. You know me. Come in. <laughs> Mr. Benny? Oh, you, huh? Yes. I want to take this opportunity of wishing you and your violin a very, very successful performance. Well, thank you. That's much better. And who might you be? I might be a music lover, but I'm not. <laughs> Goodbye. Mm, these pets. Doesn't NBC know you can buy a lock for a dollar? Well, I didn't hear that fellow with the saw. Why didn't he play? Well, he's a union carpenter. He can't work on Sunday. Oh, I see. <laughs> Mm. By the way, Phil, uh, aren't your mother and sister Lucy Bell coming up to hear me play tonight? I don't know why. Well, it would be a kind of an inspiration to have Lucy Bell here. Uh, come here a minute, Phil. I'm going in the other room and call her up. Well, go ahead. Uh, keep the gang occupied while I slip away. After all, it's none of their business. Remember, keep it a secret. Huh? Okay, Jack. It's delightful, it's delightful. Where are you going, Jack? None of your business. It's a secret. <laughs> While Jack is making a secret phone call to Lucy Bell, let me divert your attention to Jell-O. Jell-O is just as sweet and tempting as Lucy Bell, and you don't have to be in a phone booth to enjoy it. <laughs> so remember, always dial J-E-L-L-O, and if the lime is busy, you can still get strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, and lemon. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, Don. Yes, Mary. Uh, let's open his door and listen in on Jack. Oh, he might not like it, you know. What's the difference? Come on, fellas. Okay. Oh, boy, secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, Lucy Bell. I do, too. Ah, oh, you're just saying that because I'm Phil's boss. Are you coming up the broadcast tonight? I'm going to play the B, you know. Ah, oh, come on and hear the great big man play the fiddlesy whittlesy. Ah, <laughs> oh, please. Pretty please. <laughs> Ain't he the sheep? Shh, Kenny. You will? That's well. Gosh, I can hardly wait till you get here. Goodbye, Toots. It's delightful, it's lovely. Well, Don, <clears throat> let's get back to the grind. <clears throat> How'd you make out, Jack? Well, it so happens, young lady, I was phoning my tailor. Oh, yeah? Since when have you been calling him Toots? <laughs> well, that's his name, Toots Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddlesy, whittlesy. Now, listen here, listen. Oh, baby, talk to your tailor, huh? Well, he's a young fella. <laughs> Why didn't you order a suitsy whoopsie? Hmm, you're all so funny, you guys. Why don't you fellas leave Jack alone? Yeah. I know how he feels, for I, too, have love. Why, Kenny? <laughs> oh, cut it out, fellas. Fine bunch of pals I got around here. Oh, the great big man can't take it. Cut it out now. And with Alan listening in, too. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Andy. Hiya, Jack. <laughs> well, Andy, I didn't expect you here tonight much. Well, I came over to hear you play the beat. You know, my mother thinks you're a wonderful violinist. Well, thanks, Andy. That's fine. Uh, of course, she thinks I'm a good singer, too. <laughs> Kind of sorry you spoiled the compliment, eh? Hello, Andy. Hello, Daisy. I was going to call you Saturday night, but one of my hogs took sick. Well, I guess your family comes first. <laughs> now, Mary, you shouldn't say that to Andy. Why not? I haven't had a laugh for two pages. Oh. <laughs> say, Buck, when are we going to play cowboy again and look for Cactus Face? 
We got a new villain now, Andy, although his name isn't Cactus Face. Oh, you mean Rattlesnake, Alan? <laughs> That's the vomit. And any day now, we may have to hit the trail for New York. Did you hear him last Wednesday when he said you were anemic? Yes, I did, Andy. <laughs> you know, his voice gets on my nerves. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't bring that up if I were you. But he should talk about me being anemic. Get this, Andy. Come here, everybody. <laughs> Listen, that Alan is so anemic that when he eats a blood orange, his veins jump up and down with glee. <laughs> that a good one? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Come here. Jack, do you want another one you can pull on him? Yes, and if he gets fresh again, I'll do it next Sunday. What's the gag, Andy? Well, you say that Alan is so pale yeah. that when he sleeps between two sheets, the bed looks empty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be able to say that without laughing. You know? Say, Jack, I got one. What is it, Phil? Fred Allen is so anemic that he has to stick out his tongue to get color in his face. <laughs> oh, that's a peach. I hope he's listening in. Yeah, I'll bet he's so embarrassed he's yawning. Well, that's just to put up a front. Now. Hey, Jack, I got one for you. You have, Kenny? Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this is a honey. Well, go ahead, Kenny. What is it? Oh, that Fred one. Allen is so anemic yeah. that if you gave him a transfusion with white horse, he'd still look better than Jack Benny. <laughs> Oh, yeah? What's funny about that? I don't know. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> you better. By the way, your option looks a little anemic, too. Well, then it matches my salary. <laughs> Come on, Mary. That kid is getting too smart. And don't let him listen to Alan. Hmm, playboy. <laughs>
sung by Kenny Baker, Pride of the Jello Program, when he sings. Ain't it the truth? Yeah. <laughs> well, Jack, a telegram came in for you while Kenny was singing. Uh, take it, Mary. I'll read it later. My musical debut tonight. And now, folks. <laughs> oh, I didn't see her. Hello, Lita. She came up to wish you good luck. Well, well, that's mighty sweet. She hasn't been up here in a long time. Huh? Go ahead, Lena. Congratulate, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Lena. I know that comes from your heart. <laughs> Although most of it didn't get here. It must have stopped at her Adam's apple for a visit. Yeah, quiet, Mary. That's Kenny's fiance, isn't she, Kenny? Yeah. What's fiance? French for dope. <laughs> Now, Lena, if you want to hear me play, you sit right down there alongside of Andy. All right. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, boy, a caveman. Here come my folks now, Jack. Well, hello, 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 Mr. Harris. Hello. 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 How are you, Lucy Bell? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure glad you got here, Mrs. Harris. Well, son, I wouldn't miss your concert for anything. Well, well. Are you glad to be here, Lucy Bell? Oh, sure. I'm just tickled pink. <laughs> so would Jack be if he wasn't anemic. <laughs> Mary. She's quite right, and I think Miss Allen showed mighty poor taste to mention it. But, Mrs. Harris, I'm not anemic. You, now, that's just... nothing to be ashamed of, son. Oh, you well, you just haven't been eating the right thing. Oh, oh mother, he looks all right to me. That's just your heart talking, Lucy Bell. You know he looks awful. But, Mrs. Harris, Now, I'm I not brought a... you something that'll Look, fix you I... right up. Cod liver oil. Well, I don't like cod liver oil. <laughs> you better take it, son. Now, come on, open your mouth. I won't. Throw in a herring and he'll snap at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like gefilto. <laughs> Well, all right, Mrs. Harris, I'll take it, but I don't need it. It's just to please you. All right. Oh, open your mouth. Oh, that Alan. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> now, that wasn't bad, was it, son? No. Ugh. <laughs> U-U-G-H there. Kenny. Kenny, what are you screwing up your face for? Boy, have I got an imagination. Mm. <laughs> Fine thing. Now when I play my violin solo, I'll be making faces back at the audience. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? I just read that wire that came for you. Yeah, well, if it's so funny, let's hear it. Uh, it says, uh, Jack Benny, NBC Studio, Hollywood. <laughs> Best mm. wishes on your solo tonight. Stop. <laughs> well, well, go ahead. What is it? Heard you played the violin in your new picture, College Holiday. You should be in the good earth. <laughs> Very funny. Who's that from? It's signed Ching Ling Allen. I thought so. Play, Phil. Oops, I can still take that stuff.
slumming on Park Avenue from the picture On the Avenue, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Mmm, that oil. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as our feature attraction this evening, I am going to play the B, and as I said before, vindicate myself in the eyes of the public. Now, before going to my number, I want to say that I do not entertain any hard feelings toward that certain New England boiled comedian. In fact, I could almost forgive him for keeping that 10-year-old boy up till all hours of the night in an attempt to belittle a man whom he once called friend. <laughs> I did not come here to praise Alan or to bury him. But what I am going to do tonight, I am doing in the name of justice. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, Jack, a couple of more telegrams just came in. Thanks, Don. Take them, Mary. This is certainly a busy night. Oh, Kenny, you better arrange a few more chairs. People are still coming in. Okay. Oh, Jack, here's a wire from the mayor of Waukegan. The mayor, eh? Not mm -hmm. Bitey Talcott. Well, I knew my hometown would come through. Good old Bitey. I used to go to school with him. Why doesn't he ever come out here to see you? He will as soon as he graduates. <laughs> Don't mind her, Bitey. What does he say in the wire, Mary? Uh, he says that, Dear Jack, all Waukegan is proud of you tonight. Stop. Right after your broadcast, we're going to hang a picture, or you, in the city hall. Let me see that. <laughs> that says, hang a picture of me, not or me. Oh, you're always so fussy. Well, then read things right. <laughs> say, Phil, what time is it? It's about 8.55, Jack. Well, we better get going, then, with my violin. So are the boys all ready? Sure are. Wake up, man. <laughs> and now, folks... Hey, what's that? The mayor just graduated. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's pretty smart and my friend. Come on, Phil, get the boys tuned up. Right, Jack, come on. Popcorn, peanuts, and cracker, Jack. Get them while they're hot. Program, programs. You can't tell one note from another without program. Jello, jello, get your jello here. None genuine without the big red letters on the box. Here you are, sir. Earmuffs, get your earmuffs here. You can't enjoy the show without earmuffs. <laughs> I wanted this to be high class. Hey, Kenny, get my violin before someone starts selling balloons. What? I said, get my violin. Where's the ticket? I got it out this morning. <laughs> Where's the ticket? My violin is in the case behind the piano. Okay. Now hurry up, will you? Well, introduce me, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Benny will now play that much talked of composition. Schubert's immortal classic, The Bee. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kenny, hurry. Oh, Jack. 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 What's the matter, Kenny? Your violin is gone. Gone? Oh. Oh. Well, it can't be. I left it in the case right behind the piano. Well, here's the case, and it's empty. Oh, well, now, nobody's getting away from that right here. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. I'll handle this. Lock that door and close those windows. Now, nobody leave this room. All right, come clean. Somebody in this room stole my violin. Somebody hired, most likely, by Fred Allen. I can have the police here inside of three minutes. Now, come on. Who took that violin? Quiet. Now, this is your last chance to confess. Who stole it? Come on. I know who took your violin, Mr. Benny. All right, stranger. Who took it? Your violin was... Yes, yes. Your violin was taken by... <laughs> this will be continued next Sunday night. Who took Jack's violin? Was it the mysterious stranger? Was it Fred Allen? Was it the credit company? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Playboy.
We all have favorite desserts of our own, but Jell-O chocolate pudding is one dessert that pleases everyone. It has the mellow homemade flavor, the grand chocolatey taste, the real old-fashioned richness that you enjoyed so much when your mother used to make chocolate pudding. But Jell-O chocolate pudding is even smoother, creamier, more chocolatey, and much easier to make. Just follow these simple directions. Mix the contents of one package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with milk. Cook and stir over a low flame until the mixture comes to a boil and is thick and satin smooth. It takes only a few minutes. Then cool and serve in sherbet glasses. One package will give you enough for six delicious servings of chocolate pudding that is absolutely the best. And it also makes a grand filling for pies and cakes. Jell-O chocolate pudding sells for the same low price as Jell-O. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate pudding. This is the uh, last number of the 19th program in the new Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night when you will positively hear the bee, even if I have to hum it. Oh, Jack, another telegram just came in. Yeah, read it. It says, uh, forget the violin. I'll give up if you will. Who's it from? Cactus Face Elmer. Hmm, I'll get him too. Good night, folks. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston came to you over the red network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony. This is Chesterton Radio, your home for podcasts of works by G.K. Chesterton, plus drama, comedy, mystery, science fiction, big bands, and much more. The soundtrack to your Chesterton Day at ChestertonRadio.com. J E L L O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with G, but you're swell. These days, we all like to have lunch or dinner at a good restaurant once in a while. And in good restaurants everywhere, you'll find that you can enjoy genuine Jell-O for dessert just as you do at home. For instance, we have just had a very complimentary letter from the nationally famous Child's Restaurants, which we think will interest you. It says, quote, You will be pleased to know that as a result of tests made in the Child's Research Laboratory, Jell-O was selected for use in all our flavored gelatin desserts. We find that Jell-O has a superior flavor, and for this reason, it is the only gelatin dessert served in Child's Restaurants. It is our aim to serve our patrons the highest quality in every line, and that we feel in gelatin desserts means genuine Jell-O. Signed, L.G. Dutton, Vice President, the Child's Company. We're mighty pleased and proud to receive this letter, and remember, whether you order Jell-O in a restaurant or from your own grocer, always be sure you get genuine Jell-O. in New York, okay, but the train trip was terrible as there was nothing but trunks and suitcases in my car. <laughs> she must have gotten in the baggage car by mistake. <laughs> New York City is just the same as... What are you I... reading, Jack? Oh, it's a letter from Mary. Gosh, it seems lonesome tonight without her, doesn't it, Doc? Oh, it sure does. You know, I kind of miss her, too. The program doesn't seem the same without Mary. Not so loud, Phil. She's probably listening in. There's no use spoiling her. Uh, what does she say in her letter, Jack? Well, it's a little personal, Don. You know, she wouldn't want me to read it to everybody. Oh, go ahead. All right. Uh, dear Jack, Don, Phil, Kenny, and everybody. <laughs> Arrived in New York. Oh, oh, I read that. Yeah. She says, I got in Chicago on time and stopped there for three hours between trains. 
Believe me, it's no fun standing between trains. You get cinders all over you. <laughs> she certainly takes things literally, doesn't she? Enjoy the ride to New York. The train had a streamline, and so did that salesman I met. <laughs> But don't worry, I can take care of myself. And anyway, he got off at Cleveland. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> She's right in form yeah. there. When I arrived at Grand Central Station, a great big man rushed up, threw his arms around me, and kissed me. Was I disappointed when I found out it was my uncle? <laughs> I am stopping at the Hotel Lombardi, which is just 1,500 miles up the street from the Miami Biltmore. I hope she doesn't try to go in swimming. And <laughs> Mama, Papa, and Brother Hillard came in from Plainfield, and we went to Aunt Rose's new wedding last night. <laughs> Papa was going to wear his full-dress suit with the tails, but when he took it out of the closet, he found that the moths had eaten it into a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> not bad. Yeah. This afternoon, while passing Radio City, I ran into Fred Allen. Hmm. He spoke about you, and believe me, that's no way to talk in front of a lady. <laughs> I was going to slap his face, but he was chewing tobacco, so I thought twice. <laughs> anyway, he invited me to lunch, but made me pay my own check. I couldn't do anything about it, though, as he claimed his invitation wasn't in writing. <laughs> Same old Alan. Huh? Oh, he's not that tight. He's right? not, eh? Listen, fellas. Have you ever played poker with Alan? No. Oh. Well, if you ever do, watch out. He plays a very conservative game. Come here a minute. When he opens the pot, you can throw away four kings. <laughs> no kidding. Really, I'm not kidding. Not only that, he cheats, too. I remember one time I caught him sending out three white chips to be dyed. <laughs> oh, Jack! Jack, you're exaggerating. Well, maybe it was only two chips. I don't know. Well, go ahead, Jack, with Mary's letter. Okay. I am writing this letter in the lobby of the hotel, and the swellest-looking fellow is sitting opposite me. He just smiled, which explains this blot. <laughs> She's probably kidding. That nice man just smiled again, so we'll close wishing good luck to you and me. <laughs> Yours faithfully, Mary. <laughs> Hey, that was cute, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, fellas. How are you? Hi, Kenny. Say, Jack, I got a surprise for you. What is it? Well, I knew Mary wasn't going to be here, so I brought my girl, Lena, to help out with the program. Well, that's very nice of you, Kenny. We need help. Oh, there she is. Hello, Lena. How are you? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Hmm. Isn't she clever, Jack? Yeah, well, uh, Oh, I... that's only part of it. Now, here's a joke we made up. This'll kill you. Go ahead, Lena, ask him. Is this going to be funny? <laughs> we think so. Go ahead, Lena. All right. What's the difference between Mary Livingston and the Queen Mary? Well, the question is clever. Go ahead, Lena. What is the difference between Mary Livingston and the Queen Mary? Mary Livingston is a girl, and the Queen Mary is a boat. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about that, Kenny? <laughs> Gee, don't you get it? Mary isn't a boat. Oh, am I surprised? <laughs> I must tell her to keep out of water. Yeah. Now, Lena, do that laugh like Mary does. And, Jack, you ask her what she's laughing at. Okay. Go ahead, Lena. Laugh like Mary. <laughs> now, ask her, Jack. All right. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Lena? <laughs> you, who wouldn't? <laughs> Ain't you panic? Yeah, panic meaning disaster. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. <laughs> and now Phil Harris will play... Uh... Hey, wait a minute, Jack. We got one more. Oh. Give it to him, Lena. Mr. Benny, if I gained 50 pounds, what would I be? <laughs> I don't know. What would you be, Lena? Fatter. Wow! <laughs> Yeah, just like your head up. Play up, Bella. Mary, come home. All is forgiven.
Lonely Baby, played by the orchestra and directed by Phil Harris, who came back from the Santa Anita racetrack yesterday as fast as he could walk. <laughs> Say, Phil, your orchestra sounds a little softer than usual tonight. What happened? Well, Jack, I bet my trombone player on Seabiscuit and lost. Oh, well, that's too bad. Huh? Doggone it, every horse I bet on loses by a nose. Well, you'll either have to get hotter tips or longer horses. Yeah. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> like that, huh? Well, they must have lost two out there. I can see that. Say, huh? Jack, uh, how did you make out in the handicap? Not so good, Phil. Unfortunately, the horse I bet on just got over the flu and was afraid of crowds. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Phil, you know, I, as, when it comes to gambling, I'm a pretty good sport, and I don't mind when my horse lags behind. But when he walks over the rail and takes a bite of my hot dog, that's going a little too far. <laughs> you think so? So you learned your lesson, eh? Yes, sir. The next horse I bet on will have to have a diesel engine in him. Say, what are you fellas talking about? Oh, nothing much, Don. Is it important? No. Well, Jell-O is. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are considering a tempting dessert to top off your meal, decide on Jell-O because it has that new extra-rich fresh fruit flavor... And it tastes twice as good as ever before. Hooray for Rosemont. <laughs> yes, with the big red letters on the jockey. <laughs> Say, what is this, a racetrack or a program? Oh, come in. Hello, Jigbani. Yes, yes, what can I do for you? Well, pardon the interruption, Poopsie. But I'm a detective. A detective, eh? You said it. A bloodhound with a dialect. <laughs> mm, well, what do you want? I'm under the impression that you lost a Wiley. Is this correct? A vial, yes. Did you find it? Did you offer a reward? Yes. Then I found it. <laughs> Here you are. Well, well. Hey, fellas, look. Oh, my oh, violin. Oh, friend. 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 What are you oh, well, Say, it sure is my violin, all right. They say, you know, fellas, I knew I'd get it back tonight. Virtue triumph. Then you're going to play the B, eh? Am I? Listen, fellas, this is the night of night. Not only will I redeem myself in the eyes of my listeners... But I'll make Fred Allen hang his head so low he'll have to get an extra shoe for his nose. <laughs> and it won't be any size two, either. Oh, his nose isn't that long, Jack. It's long enough to reach clear to Hollywood and to my affairs. <laughs> Listen, Jack, why don't you forget the B and play something popular? Well, what song would you like to hear? Pennies from Herring. Herring? That's heaven. You're telling me? <laughs> well, Mr. Benny... To put it blunt to, mm -hmm. how's about the compensation? Oh, yes, the reward. Here you are, my good man, a nice, new, green, crisp, crinkly $1 bill. Hmm, adjectives he gives me. <laughs> oh, you don't want it, eh? Don't jump at conclusions. Well, that's all you're going to get, a dollar. Here. Thank you. I'll put it in my wallet. It's a nice wallet. I thought it was your chest. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Uh, say, what's your name? That I can tell you. Why not? There's a reward for me, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. What a chiseler. Fred Allen is right. <laughs> well, boys, it cost me a dollar to get my violin back, but it was worth every penny of it. Oh, Kenny, how about singing your song while I get all set for my number? Okay, Jack. Are you really going to play the B? Am I going to play the B? Did Columbus turn back in the middle of the Atlantic? I don't know. Did Washington hesitate before crossing the Delaware? I don't know. Did Admiral Dewey retreat at Medilla? Three strikes, I'm out. Then sing, Daddy. Am I going to play the B? <laughs> Conversation Instead of being bright Let's be ourselves tonight And take advantage of the situation The night is young And you're so beautiful
singing The Night is Young and You're So Beautiful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. The moment when I will erase all verbal stains and oral blemishes from the once illustrious name of Jack Benny. <laughs> of course, after concluding my selection to be, Mr. Allen, who even thinks that wrestling is crooked... <laughs> will no doubt accuse me of trickery. To nip such a possibility in the bud, I will pass through our studio audience and you folks can observe for yourselves that I have only a violin in one hand and a bow in the other. a boy, Jack. Quiet, I wouldn't trust you either. <laughs> I further wish to state that there is nothing hidden up my sleeve and no accomplices, either mechanical or human, in this auditorium. Now for my first trick, I mean solo, I... Uh, Come in. Hello, Buck. Oh, hi, Andy. <laughs> hey, Andy. Hey, you got Andy, you got here just in time. Yep, and when I heard that you got your fiddle back, I ran up here as fast as I could. Well, that was nice of you. <laughs> Say, Buck, I was sure surprised when I heard Mary went to New York. Yeah, she left last week for a short vacation. Doggone it, I'm sorry I missed her. I wanted to kiss her goodbye. Well, Andy, you can kiss her when she gets back. Yeah, she'll be rested up then and can take it. <laughs> One thing I like about you, Andy, you don't brag. You know? <laughs> What's that? That's Kenny's girl, Lena. I know you thought it was the radiator. Lena, you know, uh, you know Andy Devine. Oh, sure, the man that talks like Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald Duck, that's, that's pretty good huh? Well, we're doing all right We're both in pictures Yeah Well, Andy, I'm glad you came up to the studio tonight You know, you're going to hear me play the bee And make out a fool out of that town hall sandman <laughs> And you know what the sandman does Yeah Did you hear him last Wednesday when he said A buzzard brought me instead of a stork? A buzzard? Yeah Oh, doggone it I thought he said blizzard Now I got to get mad all over again why don't I get funny lines like that? Why don't I get any lines? Please, fellows. Well, the time is growing short. My fingers are just itching to wander over those violin strings, so let's get going. Andy, you sit right down in front and enjoy yourself. Okay, Buck, can I applaud now in case I fall asleep? No, I'll have to take that chance, Andy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before going into my number, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the man who will share my glory tonight. My accompanist, that eminent pianist, Rachmaninoff... T. Smith. <laughs> take, a, take a bow, Mr. Smith. Thank you. And my price is still $10. Oh. I tried to get him for eight, folks, but he's got me in a spot. <laughs> well, hand me that violin, Kenny. Here you are, Jack. I'll even take that line. Hey, what's the matter with you, Phil? Well, I want to be an actor. Well, you're on the wrong program. <laughs> with my talent, yes. Hmm. Well, <laughs> that was pretty good for an old violin, isn't it? So you're really going to play the B this time, eh, Jack? John, I can't get out of it. I mean, I, I, I'm raring to go. <laughs> Come on, introduce me, and remember that Jello isn't playing this number. Wait till I tune up, just... 
Sounds pretty good okay. from here. Is all right? right. Okay. okay, okay, Jack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Benny will now play Schubert's immortal classic, The Bee. If you please, Professor. Fellas, it was nothing, nothing at all. Well, what now, Mr. Allen? <laughs> Play, Phil, I did. <laughs> from Swing High, Swing Low, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And very good, Phil, very good. Not a classic, perhaps, but quite well done. Say, Jan. Yes, Kenny? When are you going to play the B? I just played it. Yeah, but you clipped its wings. Why, <laughs> right, what do you mean? Well, when you came to the hard part, you switched to plenty of money and you. Well, there was a detour sign on my music. 
And furthermore, Phil, you've been acting a bit uppity lately. Are you dissatisfied with your job here? Are you unhappy in our little group? I mean, are you seeking greener postures? No. Greener money. Oh. Well, let me tell you something, Phil. I... Oh, excuse me a minute. There's the phone. Keep the argument going, Kenny. Now, listen, Phil. Who do you think I am? <laughs> now, never mind, Kenny. I'll pick up the argument later. Never mind. Huh? Don't bother. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh, hello, Mary. How are you, honey? It's Mary, fellas. You did? Well, I'm glad you liked it. I played it the best I could. Of course, right in the middle of the number, I found out one of my strings was dental floss. <laughs> Which was all right. I just had dinner. Are you having a good time in New York? <laughs> well, I do, too, but I don't see how I can get away from here. Well, anyway, Mary, have a good time and come back soon. Yeah. Yeah, everybody sends their love. Yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah, goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Hello? What's that, operator? Yes, I'll accept the charges. Yes. <laughs> you know, fellas, it must be nice in New York right now. Gee, after talking to Mary, I'd, yeah, I'd love to go there for a couple of weeks. So would I. Me too. You know, Buck, I've never been to New York. Well, don't cry, Andy. <laughs> you haven't? No. Well, you... <laughs> that last one was a laugh, wasn't it? <laughs> well, Andy, you, you get a big kick out of it. No, really, you would. You'd, you'd love it. You know, you could take a subway and see the whole town. You know. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, fellas. You know, I got a... Wait a minute, I got an idea. Listen, get away from the microphone, fellas. I don't want Mary to hear this. You know what I'd like to do? Now, wait a minute. Step up. Get away from the mic. I'd like to surprise Mary, hop on a train, and join her in New York. New York? Quiet! <laughs> John, step up those microphones. Okay, Jack. Now, wait a minute. Can everybody make the trip? I can. It's okay with me, <laughs> How about you, Phil? Well, I'll have to join you later. Shall I take my trainer along? No, Andy, they have hotels in New York. Two of them. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Listen, we'll arrange this right away. I'll call up the station now and make our reservations. And, Don, mm -hmm. while I'm ordering the tickets, you make a lot of noise about Jello or anything, but make it loud. I don't want Mary to hear this. Right, Jack, right. Go ahead. Hello? Operator? Operator, get me the... Go ahead, Don. I'm glad to have this opportunity to tell Santa you about Bay Jello, the fastest selling gelatin dessert on the market. Hello, take it off us? It is first in favor well, because it's first Benny. in flavor. And it comes in six delicious flavors strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. And so be sure low. to ask for Jello by name. Yes, Look for the tickets. big red we'll letters on the box. What? No, not six delicious flavors, six tickets. <laughs> no, no, no. The name is not Raspberry, it's Jack Berry. I mean, Jack Benny. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Well, fellas, it's all said. Oh, boy, I could just see the look on Mary's face when we popped in on her. Yeah, I could hardly wait. I'm going right home now and pack. Are you going to take your trunk, Kenny? No, my trunk's been to New York. <laughs> well, then don't bother. Don't... Oh, boy, just imagine that. Two weeks to New York. Broadway. Times Square. Columbus Circle. Tin Pan Alley. 42nd Street. Grant's Tomb. <laughs> Play it. Everybody loves parties, and here's a party dessert that you can serve every day. It looks mighty festive, and it's no trouble to prepare because it's another delicious dessert that's made with jello. It's called strawberry snow, and this is how you make it. Dissolve one package of strawberry jello in one pint of hot water. Then chill until cold and syrupy and place in a bowl of ice or ice water. Add one egg white and whip with a rotary egg beater until fluffy. Mold or pile in sherbet glasses and chill. It's a feast for the eye, a treat for the taste, with tempting true fruit flavor to please everybody. So give everyday dinners a party touch. 
have strawberry snow for dessert one night this week. But be sure you make it with the real thing. Genuine Jello with the extra rich, fresh fruit flavor. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jello. This is the last number of the 22nd program in the new Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from New York City. The detective on the program was played by Pat C. Flick through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Say, Jack, why can't we leave for New York right now? No, we'll have to wait till Tuesday night because I'm dropping in on Ben Burney's program first. Well, why are you still whispering? I want to surprise Ben, too. Good night, folks. <laughs> The tune was plenty of money in Newark from the gold diggers of 1937. The night is young and Newark so beautiful from Casa Manana. And I've got my love to keep me warm from Irving Berlin's score of On the Avenue. This program has come to you from Hollywood, California, through the facilities of the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. Help, help. Oh! The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Abe Lyman and his orchestra. This program comes to you from the Grand Ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria. The orchestra opens a program with plenty of money and you from the Gold Diggers of 1937. <laughs> Some of our most pleasant hours are spent around the family dinner table. It's really grand to get together with mother, father, and all the rest to talk things over and enjoy good food. And those times are even more pleasant when dessert is a gleaming dish of delicious jello. Young and old, everybody enjoys jello's fresh fruit taste. It's appetizing, refreshing, really satisfying, too. No wonder jello is the most popular gelatin dessert in the entire world today. For only in genuine Jell-O do you get Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor. So why not brighten up your family table by serving Jell-O for dessert soon? It's easy to make, good to look at, and delightful to taste. Accept no substitutes. Ask your grocer for the one and only genuine Jell-O. Money and You, played by Abe Lyman and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the man who made the bee, public insect number one, Jack Benny. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And believe me, folks, I'm sure glad to be back in New York for a couple of weeks. Well, Jack, if you like it so well here, why didn't you come sooner? I couldn't, Don. Uh, not until I had vindicated myself and my violin teacher. Oh, I see. Now that I've played the B, I can walk down Broadway with head high, unashamed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, I thought you did a great job. Did you bring your violin with you? No, I sent it to Honolulu for a rest. <laughs> for a rest? Yes. If you'd been missing for days and then had the bee played on you, you'd want a rest, too. Well, all I did was hear it, and I could stand the vacation. <laughs> One more crack like that, and you'll get it. <laughs> anyway, Don, let's not engage in any low banter tonight. After all, we're broadcasting from the Waldorf Astoria. Yes, indeed. This is a pretty high-class place, isn't it? Yes, sir. Quite swanky. Swanky? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a shave before they let me in the barber shop. <laughs> I think their prices here are quite well balanced. I didn't pay a cent more for having my suit pressed than I did for my suit. <laughs> You're stopping here, aren't you, Don? Oh, yes, Jack. I have a lovely room on the 22nd floor. Well, when you go to your room tonight, be sure and use the middle elevator. The middle elevator? Why? Uh, that one has the best floor show. <laughs> I tell you, Don, the service here is de luxe. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes. On behalf of the entire personnel of the Waldorf Astoria, may I extend a cordial greeting and invite you to avail yourself of every possible facility here. Well, thank you. Are you the uh, managing director? No, I'm vice president in charge of removing dishes. 
Oh, uh, a bus boy. Uh, yes, in the vernacular. <laughs> uh, here's my card. Your card, thank you. Well, that's odd, a round card. It's also a butterfly. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemanly fellow, wasn't he? Yes, rather. Yes. <laughs> hello, Jack. Is this the place? Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> Glad to see you. That was quite a reception you got, wasn't it? Yeah, but there's one man in the second row who wasn't applauding. Where? Right over there. Well, oh, no wonder, Mary. The poor fellow has one arm in a sling. Well, it wouldn't hurt him to slap his face for a friend. <laughs> That's right. Well, Mary, we sure missed you last week, didn't we, Don? Well, I'll say we did. Oh, hello, Don. I didn't see you. How are you, Mary? Gee, you've changed. Look, Jack, he's lost his double chin. Quiet, it's in his collar. <laughs> Say, Mary, you've been in New York all alone for a week. What have you been doing? Plenty, and I wasn't alone. Oh. <laughs> uh, you remember the fellow I wrote you about that I met on the train? Oh, you mean that salesman? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. You told me in your letter he got off at Cleveland. Uh, just to mail that letter. He got right on again. Oh. <laughs> so he's the guy that's been taking you out. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I saw all the good shows. And, oh, Jack, there's one show that you shouldn't miss. Really? It's called, uh... Gee, I can't think of the name of it. Was it uh, Stage Door? No. Uh, Red Hot and Blue? No, that's funny. funny. I saw the name stamped right on the towel in my hotel. The name stamped on the towel in your hotel? I got it. You can't take it with you. <laughs> oh, sure. There's nothing like drying yourself with a good show. <laughs> Say, Jack. Yeah? Where's Phil Harris? Phil Harris, darn it. I left him in Hollywood. I forgot my pajamas, too. <laughs> Oh, Jack, uh, Phil asked me to tell you that he'll join us just as soon as he's through making that picture. Oh, yes. Uh, Don, come here a minute, will you? Uh, this Abe Lyman that's, uh, who's leading the orchestra, what kind of a guy is he? Personally, I mean. Well, Jack, he's really an awfully nice fellow. You, you like him, I'm sure. Abe, uh, you know Jack Benny, don't you? Sure. How are you, Jack? Fine, Abe. Uh, funny, you, uh, you and I have never worked together before, have we? No, and I'm very happy to have this opportunity. Well, thanks. Seems to be quite a regular fellow, Don. Uh, now, Abe, uh, this being your first appearance with me, I'd like to start you off on the right foot. Uh, you don't mind, do you? Hmm. Well, I just want it understood that I'm head man here, and whatever I say goes. Do you understand? Hmm. And, uh, <laughs> furthermore, I want this settled right now so we won't have any trouble in the future. Is that clear? Are you through? Yes. Now, let me tell you something. You might be Buck Benny, but don't try to ride me. <laughs> oh, uh... He got it right, this show, anyway. Oh, a fresh guy, huh? Better look out, Jack. Why? I saw him direct the opening number with a blackjack. Oh. Well, don't worry, Mary. I'm a pretty tough guy myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I can handle you and Fred Allen. Well, no wonder. We're both anemic. <laughs> Say, Don, come here a minute. I thought you told me Lyman was a nice guy. Well, he is, Jack, but this is his first time working with you, and naturally he's just a little nervous and excited. You can't blame him. Oh, is that it? Well, I guess maybe I was a little hasty and inconsiderate. After all, I can appreciate his state of mind. Uh, tell him to play, Don. Play, Mr. Lyman. These orchestra leaders are so sensitive. <laughs>
Park Avenue from On the Avenue, played by the orchestra and directed by Abe Lyman, the Phil Harris of the East. And very good, Abe. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Abe, you don't mind if I describe you to our radio audience, do you? After all, a little word picture wouldn't be amiss. No, go right ahead, but just be careful what you say, that's all. Now, wait a minute. Let's not start that all over again. This is my program, and I'll say anything I want to. Don't sound awfully funny with my fist in your mouth. <laughs> Are you going to stand for that, Jack? I ain't sitting down, honey. You will in a minute, Toots. Oh. Why don't you let me describe him, Jack? All right, Mary. I'm a fine boss. I wish Vaudeville would come back. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, in describing Abe Lyman, I would say that he's good-looking, rather tall, dark, and extremely romantic. Now, how do you know he's romantic? I haven't been to New York a week for nothing. Hi, Abe. Hi, babe. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, Mary. I thought you told me you went out with a salesman. That's Abe, all right. Oh, I see. I see. Speaking of Mr. Lyman, let me tell you about Jell-O. It tastes twice as good as ever before and has those six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and Lyman. <laughs> hey, that's clever. Oh, kidding. That's very clever now. That was good. Imagine if Phil was here and you had to say orange, lemon, and Harris. That wouldn't fit, you know. Hello, Jack and Mary. Hi, you darling. Oh, hello, hello, Kenny. Kenny. How are you, Kenny? Kenny, we're all glad to see you. How do you like being back in New York? Great. I'm having a swell time. That's good. I've seen a lot of places I missed last year. I went to Central Park, the Bronx Zoo, and the Aquarium. And... The Aquarium, eh? I bet you like that. Huh? No, nah, there was nothing but fish. <laughs> well, that's the trouble with those places, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're having such a good time, Kenny. Uh, did you go to Radio City? No, New York is good enough for me. <laughs> That's right, that's right. There's no use, no use jacking all over the country. I don't blame you. Say, Jack, last night I went to Madison Square Garden to see the races. Oh, the races, huh? Did you like it? Yeah, but the joggies went around so fast the horses looked like bicycles. <laughs> well, they were bicycles. Isn't that awful, Mary? I'm saving my answer for our last program. This may be it. You can't tell. <laughs> well, Kenny, what are you going to sing on your uh, first broadcast from New York? I'm going to sing When the Poppies Bloom Again. Well, I'm sure we'll like that. Oh, by the way, I want you to meet Abe Lyman, our temporary maestro. Uh, but watch out, Kenny. He's a little nervous tonight. You know, be careful. Say, Abe, uh, uh, this is Kenny Baker, our tenor. Hello, Kenny. Hello. Say, Mr. Lyman, when you play my number, just do it the way it's written, will you? Kenny. Kenny. It's my own arrangement, and I don't like it played any other way. Uh, do you get me? Kenny, be careful. Look who's bawling me out. Listen, Lyman, what Jack says goes double for me. Atta boy, Kenny. I'm right with you. You stay out of this, Jack, unless you want your ears pleated. <laughs> can, this be, can this be the man who plays those dreamy waltzes on the radio? Go ahead and sing, Kenny. Uh, your ears wouldn't look good pleated, Jack. I don't think so. Everything to you and me, but love undying still keeps me sighing. My heart is crying for you alone. When the poppies bloom again, I'll remember. My lonely footsteps stray Where you must ever stay I place a sweet bouquet My token of love Darling, till we meet again I'll be ever true When 
when the poppies bloom again, I'll remember you. stopping the show. I may not stop it myself, Kenny, but I'll slow it up a whole lot. <laughs> that was Kenny Baker singing When the Poppies Bloom Again, accompanied by the Gas House Gang. <laughs> that was beautiful, Kenny. You were so at ease. Sure, I'm not afraid of Lyman. Well, I'm not either, but I don't want any rough house at the Waldorf. With you on the bottom. Now, listen. <laughs> this is our first program in New York, and I'm just trying to keep things orderly, that's all. Outside of that, I'm not afraid of anyone. You're not, eh? No. Then you've either got a loud cheaper. You got a what? Oh, take that joke again. Come here, that's a good joke. Let's take, let's take the joke. Outside of that, I'm not afraid of anyone. Go ahead. You're not, eh? No. Then you've either got a loud heart or a cheap watch. That's the one. That's the one. See? I didn't want you to miss it. That was funny. Say, Don. Don, uh, speaking of hearts, what time is it? I mean, speaking of watches. Uh, oh, about, about 8.45. It is. I wished he'd get here. Who? Well, listen, Don, when I played the B last Sunday night, I didn't completely vindicate myself. There's one small point yet to be settled. Uh, what is that, Jack? Well, I asked Stuart Cannon, that little boy who originally played the B and caused all my trouble with Alan, to come up here tonight, and I'm going to find out if he's really ten years old. Let's well, find out how to play the B, too. I played it all right. But I have my doubts about Alan's statement. If that child is over ten, and I think he is... Then Mr. Allen has deceived his listeners, thereby misinforming over 400 people around the country. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to find out the truth. Hey, maybe that's him. Huh? Come in. Hello. Hey, hey, fellas, look. Look who's here. Hello, friends. Well, Slapperman. Yeah, yeah. Slapperman, I'm sure glad to see you. Well, the feeling is neutral. Thank you. <laughs> Jack, so soon when I found out you was in New York, I rushed right down from Boston to see you. From Boston, eh? Well, that was nice of you, Slap. I am my out of breath. I should have taken the train. <laughs> well, 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 I'm glad you dropped in. Oh, Slap, you remember Kenny Baker and Don Wilson, don't you? Why, certainly. Hello, Kenny boy. Hello, Slappy. Oh, how are you, Slappy? It's nice to see you. Well, Donny boy, are you still making with the jello? Oh, sure. And Slap. <laughs> Slap, here's Mary. My goodness, Mary, you're a sight for chopped ice. <laughs> you know, I've asked you for our little kids, but my wife is listening in. Ah, uh, come on, maybe it'll sound like that. Hey, Slap! Uh, leave me alone, I'm delirious. How was it, Mary? I don't know, it was standing on my feet. Oh. Slap, uh, tell me something about yourself. What are you doing these days? Well, Jack, I'm in the hotel business. The hotel business? Yes. I didn't know that. Uh, what's the name of your hotel? Waterman's Little Gypsy Serum. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jack has a special attraction. My wife tells fortune. Oh, uh, can she read tea leaves? Yes, because they're not in English. <laughs> well, tell me, Slap, how big a hotel have you? 25 rooms, and so clean you can eat in them. Oh, uh, how about sleeping in them? That I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> 25 rooms, eh? Have you, have you got an elevator? I had one, but I got stuck, so I made another room out of it. <laughs> Well, that was clever. Say, Jack, why don't you and Mary come over tonight? We got dancing and music. Oh, an orchestra, too. Hey, who's playing there? Fred Herring and his Oriental Canadians. <laughs> my, my, what musicians strictly swing time, boy. Say, that, that uh, reminds me, Slap. Uh, do you call Abe Lyman? Do I know Abe Lyman? Hello, Abe, boy. Hello, Slap. Is my suit ready? <laughs> hey, it's quiet. You'll have it tomorrow. Puffy Kibble. Oh, a tailor, too, huh? Say, Slep, you certainly branched out since I last saw you. Hotel, tea room, tailor, you're certainly in a lot of businesses. Hold on to your watch, Jack. You might have a pawn shop. A pawn shop? Huh? What do you think hangs for my sign? Three oranges? <laughs> well, you certainly don't believe in putting all your eggs in one business, do you? Well, Jack, it's certainly was a pleasure to see you. Thanks, Slep. Come up and see us again, won't you? Bye, certainly. Tell us goodbye, everybody. I got work to do around here. Work to do? You mean you work here at the Waldorf Astoria, too? Sure, yeah, and the house detective. So take it easy. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, I'm sure, to be 
sure good to see old Schlepperman again. He's certainly in a lot of businesses, isn't he, Mary? I bet he's in two more by now. I'll take that bet. I'm also a bookmaker. <laughs> what a guy. Hey, Don, uh, did that uh, little boy come in yet? No, not yet, Jack. Oh, well, play something, Abe. If Schlepperman is in your band, I'll die. Gee, I wish that kid would get here. <laughs> from the bandwagon played by Abe Lyman and his ex-Californian. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh... Oh, Don, uh, did that little boy get here yet? Well, uh, not yet, but, uh, Jack, did you hear that five-year-old girl play the B on the piano last Wednesday night? You mean on Alan's program? Yes. Well, let me tell you something, Don. That girl might be five, but I could swear I heard that piano playing after she walked away from it. <laughs> See, the way Alan has been dragging those kids up to his program is disgraceful. I think. But first, uh, a ten-year-old boy plays the B on a violin, then a five-year-old girl plays it on a piano. I suppose next week we'll hear it played on a rattle. <laughs> but, Jack, uh, I thought it was funny when Alan said you were so out of wind you couldn't even blow out a match. Well, he has me there. I'll admit that I don't compare with Mr. Allen when it comes to blowing. <laughs> wow! Uh, yes, sir, I... I stayed away all night thinking of that gag. You could have gone to sleep and snored a better one. Yeah. Well, anyway, tonight I'll find out the correct age of that alleged 10-year-old boy. Say, I, I hope that's him now. Come in. Is Mr. Benny here? Yes, come in. Are you Stuart Cannon, the little boy that played the bee? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, uh... I'm awfully glad you came up tonight, Stuart. What did you want to see me about, Mr. Benny? Well, it's a, uh... If it's about the violin, I don't give lessons. <laughs> no, 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 Stuart, look, no, Stuart. I merely... Look, I merely sent for you to ask a few questions. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just answer correctly and regard me as your friend. I'm scared. Scared, Stuart? Why? Mr. Allen said you were the boogeyman. Now, Stuart, that's silly. That's silly. Do I do I look like the boogeyman? Yeah. <laughs> now, now listen to me, Stuart. I'm here to prove something tonight. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I want the proof. Do you know what happens to little boys who tell lies? No. Well, you want to go to heaven, don't you? Not yet. Hmm. <laughs> now listen to me, Stuart. I listened to you last Sunday, and I didn't like it. Oh, yeah? I'm going home. Grab him, fella. Don't let him get away. Well, we got him, Jack. He looks suspicious to me. Search him, boys. Look, Jack, he's got marbles and a trout and some fish hooks. And there's a slingshot. A slingshot, eh? Disarm him, men. <laughs> now, now listen here, Stuart. Gee, you're silly. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, that's not the point. I don't want to get tough unless I have to. And then it won't be with Abe Lyman. Quiet. <laughs> True or truthfully, how old are you? Ten years old. I mean your exact age. Ten years old. Ten years old, Abe. Eh? Where were you on the night of January 7th, 1927? Home. Home, eh? And what were you doing home? I don't remember. You don't remember? You've been very well coached, Mr. Cannon. <laughs> when was your birthday? I don't remember. You don't remember. You don't remember your birthday, and yet you're positive you're 10 years old. Fuck! Now, young man. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? I don't remember. <laughs> Now, Stuart, how old were you when you first took violin lessons? Wouldn't you like to know? That's a lie. <laughs> Take them, Don. I don't seem to be getting anywhere. All right, Jack. Now, Stuart, uh, how old were you when you first started eating Jell-O? Two years. And how many delicious flavors has Jell-O? Six. And how much better is it than ever before? Twice as good. <laughs> there, you see, Jack, there's nothing wrong with this boy. You take him. <laughs> now, listen, Stuart. On the night of December 30th, 1936, you came into Fred Allen's program and played the B, didn't you? Yes, sir. And on the night of February 3rd, 1937, at the insistence of the same Mr. Allen, you repeated that performance. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Allen claims that you're only 10 years old. But I am only 10 years old. Yet you testified not less than three minutes ago that on January 7th, 1927, you were home. Yes, sir. Yet you don't remember what you were doing. So what? <laughs> Then what's the first thing you do remember? The stock market crash. I lost my shirt. Oh, you lost your shirt, eh? Yes, and you know what that means to a baby. Yeah, quiet. <laughs> now listen to me, Stuart. You'll remember what happened on January 7th, 1927. You'll remember what happened in 1929. You'll remember what happened on the nights of December 30th and February 3rd on Mr. Allen's program. And yet you don't remember your age. You're older than Ken Cannon. Now come on. Come clean. All right, check this face. I'll tell. <laughs> That's better. How old are you, Stuart Cannon? Ten years and four months. Eh. I thought so. Well, that not only exposes Fred Allen, but proves that this boy had four extra months to practice the bee. <laughs> You're excused, Mr. Cannon. I rest my case. You're intimidating the witness. Cleverman, what are you butting in for? I'm also a lawyer. Hmm, play line. Spring can't be very far off now, but whether the winds of March blow hot or cold, here's a way to add a bright springtime touch to your menus. Serve this new Jello dessert soon. It's called Prune Perfection, and it's delicious to taste, lovely to look at, and mighty easy to make. Just dissolve one package of strawberry jello in one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened, then fold in one cup of finely cut up cooked prunes. Mold and serve plain or with whipped cream. You'll enjoy this clever combination of flavors, the richness of the prunes pepped up with jello's fresh strawberry flavor. All of jello's six delicious flavors come from fresh ripe fruit skillfully blended. So why not put jello on your shopping list for tomorrow and serve prune perfection for dessert tomorrow night? But be sure you get genuine Jello with that extra rich fruit flavor. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jello. The uh, last number of the 23rd program in the new Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time. I want to tell you how glad I was to see Slepperman again, and I'd like you to meet him in person, Mr. Sam Hearn. Thank you, Jack. And little Stuart Cannon, who played the bee, which kept us going for weeks. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't he cute, Mary? Yeah. Yeah, I wish he was a couple of months older. Hmm. Good night, folks. <laughs> The 
This is Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at ChestertonRadio.com.